Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Stover, licensed marriage and family therapist, and you're listening to the Modern Day Romantic Podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. Today, we are going to dive into the concept of twin flames. Now, twin flames is this ideological notion that one soul or one spirit is split and incarnates into two bodies. And for all the romantics out there, all that pining and that yearning and that longing is to reunite with your other half. So that's the idea of twin flames, that it it really kind of comes from the new age movement. Uh, It's this idea about a spiritual connection. And I like to think of twin flames almost being the idea of a soulmate on steroids. So this is like the Big Mac, the supreme, the ultimate. Oh, you want a a soulmate? Soulmate, schmolmate. No, I'm after the twin flame, the big TW. Okay, so there's a lot to say about this. And I want to come at it from a couple different perspectives and see where we end up. Admittedly, I recently watched a series on Amazon Prime called Desperately Seeking Soulmate. And it was about a community led by a couple identifying as being twin flames that was discovered to be a cult. So it's, uh, I think this really got my wheels going too, because there's, there's so much out there, you know, so much at stake for those that are looking for or believe in having a a twin flame as so much so that there can be a a kind of desperation or a a real seeking and and maybe even being taken advantage of uh and and maybe even more than that when we're talking about a cult but but there's this real purity this real seeking and a real vulnerability for those that are looking for a twin flame partnership now with twin flames being Uh, something that is kind of spiritually uh, an orientation towards a spiritual connection with someone. This idea of one soul being split into two bodies and trying to find an, an, oh my gosh, how rare is it? Even if you do get to meet your twin, oh my gosh. And then we did. And now we have to, we have to do the hard work of um, kind of working through what twin flame literature talks a lot about you know, an extreme intensity to these relationships and patterns such as, you know, the runner and the chaser. And there's just so much material that comes up for people. And so one place I wanted to just kind of start with that is what's the difference between the idea of a twin flame relationship and a lot of other relationships? And I would say that probably, just probably, uh, for those that believe in a twin flame, it's like there's this added component of this has to work because if I'm meeting my supreme match here, if I'm literally meeting myself in another body, there's nowhere else to go other than this person right here. And you can kind of imagine from that space how that could turn... um, pretty dark. You know, it could lead to uh, obsession. It could lead to fixation. Let's just pretend, for example, because this was on the series, you know, how you say, oh, you know, that that's my twin flame over there. I just know this is my twin flame and that the other doesn't feel that way about you. Well, that's going to really set you up then to be like, what do I do? You know, I guess I just have to wait around or, you know, do everything in my power to convince them because if I can't be with them, then I'm never going to be satisfied. So I, I think that's, that's kind of one, um, worry that I have about people that subscribe to, you know, twin flame ideology is that once you've encountered this or, you know, how many, uh, like false twin flames have you met, you know, leading up to, oh no, the, I thought they were, but now no, this is the ultimate twin flame. So you can just see how uh, it can get really messy. It can get really complicated and and even kind of that vulnerability of naming, I think this is my ultimate person. And what if that's not reciprocated? That's That's an incredibly vulnerable place to find yourself. 
All right. So I just wanted to take some time to unpack some of these things. One thing I think that the idea of the twin flame relationship can really bring forward is this notion that a partnership is founded on more than, you know, physical attraction, let's say, that there's more than meets the eye. Maybe there's an unspoken uh, a connection. Maybe there's a spiritual purpose. There's a higher meaning and a higher, a higher order for why we came together to begin with. And I think this could be something really valuable, regardless if you believe in twin flames or not. What if you approach relationships to anyone, if you're dating or if you all already are partnered, and you view your relationship with your partner or this potential person as something that's that's profound, something that has particular meaning, something that has the capacity to grow you, to stretch you, to develop you. I think this could be a really powerful and, and it kind of helps broaden the perspective rather than it being so limited, you know, like uh, I'm looking for someone who meets this criteria here and I want to have a family and I want to do this and I want to do that and da 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 da, da. Well, if we bring in the spiritual dimension or they're just being a shared life philosophy and maybe room in the relationship to grow it and develop it, I think that can be really meaningful and really helpful. So I like that idea here. I also like the idea of there being a particularity to this, let's say, an individual, you know, I am me and I know me and I am looking for a specific other. I say that because depending where you're at in your own journey in partnership, sometimes people so badly want to be in a relationship that they'll just kind of choose any faceless other, let's say, it, just a spot filler, someone, to, a warm body, someone that it, it's like, where is your own... Uh, pre where are your own preferences? Where's your own self-knowledge applied saying, I want to be with a partner that has some of these qualities or traits because that would align with my own values or my own vision for my, my life and, and for what type of relationship I'd like to be in. So I like this, you know, having a particular, uh, unique connection with someone. I think that helps to kind of whittle it down some and makes it more, uh, I guess I'll go back to the word meaningful, you know, like that there's a, a particularity of, and the reason that I choose you and, and no one else. So there's that. Where I think some of the twin flame ideology can break down, one of the big things I think is that it can often lead to being an excuse for tolerating the intolerable, for maybe even staying in a relationship that is borderline toxic. Well, you know, you're my twin flame, and so we're just gonna have to work through this no matter what. And I think sometimes if we surrender or kind of throw things, um, not caution to the wind, let's say, but just we kind of throw it all out the window because I'm with my twin flame and that was the goal. And so we're here, we're together. And, and so it doesn't matter that you are every night you're yelling at me. It doesn't matter that you slapped me. It doesn't matter that, you know, we break up every five days. It, none of this matters is because we're twin flames. So I think this could be a shadow side of, of kind of subscribing to twin flame is that we cling so tightly. It, it has to be this, and, and you're the only one I can be with. And therefore, where are the boundaries? Where are the lines? Where's the choice? You know, it's, it's almost like the shadow side of having a faded relationship or believing you're, you're fated to be with someone means that you're surrendering your own individual agency and ability to choose sometimes. It's like, well, God or the universe or, you know, my higher self chose this for me. So I just kind of got to go along and I just got to trust all that. I think that the real work, the, the, the whole uh, notion in, in kind of personal growth and self-development is finding a way for the spiritual part of ourselves or maybe the transcendent part and the 
individual human part to come into relationship with one another. And so we can't just kind of, I, one of the terms we could use is spiritual bypassing. We just throw it out up into the heavens and into the stars and just say, well, it's all meant to be, it's all going to be. When, when we're really having to kind of walk around with blinders on, like this is, this is not really doing the work. So I hope that makes some sense there. I thought those were some really important things uh, to, to highlight and to spotlight in, you know, all of the, the layers to twin flame relationships and ideology. The next thing I wanted to say about it that I also think may be a bit of the, the missing link. Here's what I think could be really, really interesting is Carl Jung had a theory around the process of individuation. And what this was, was kind of a, a laid out trajectory of becoming the fullest expression and the highest expression of your whole self. So within this, there's the confrontation uh, with your shadow material. There's meeting your opposite, uh, often through partnership. You meet an inner opposite outside of yourself and you work to uh, integrate and claim parts of yourself that you simply can't come into contact with if you stay, you know, closed off, it, it takes a relationship to kind of stir the pot and get that material going. So I think he, and there's, there's several other things that, that he talks about in this journey. But one thing I think that is really helpful to consider when we're talking about twin flames is, okay, let's, let's play with this. Then if you really are meeting an aspect or a component of yourself outside of yourself, all right, do we need to literalize that? Or can it be played with more symbolically? Maybe you did meet a version of yourself when you met, you know, your your twin flame or, or your partner, or whoever this, this individual is. But maybe it doesn't mean what you think it does when you say that. So here's an example. What if you by nature identify as being a generous you know, loving, kind, sweet person. And your lovely twin flame is someone who may, you may perceive as being more selfish and um, more concerned, you know, just about themselves. They're not really as empathetic. They're not as uh, conscientious in some ways. Well, maybe you need to meet someone who's different from you and maybe even an opposite in order to come into some of those own, some of your own qualities uh, that might be similar to that. So what that would look like is they are making you confront, you know, where does, you know, selfishness live in me? Well, no, I'm not. I'm overly generous. I only do this. I, this is who I am. I, I'm not like that. I'm like this. But I think that they might be challenging you to find some middle ground there. So where is your own sense of self-assertion? Where's your own sense of boundary? Where's your own sense of individuality? Or are you a people pleaser? Are you an overgiver over here? So sometimes we meet someone who seems like our opposite so that they can reflect something back to us that we can Hmm, sit with, and it doesn't mean you have to then become like them. It just means finding the, the middle ground between maybe you're one extreme over here and there, the other extreme over here. Well, the resolution will never be to become the opposite. That's not going to work. And they're never going to become your opposite. That's not going to work. What, what if we find kind of a different way of being to integrate the opposites or, or find a middle way? So this is one thing I think with the twin flame, if you're meeting yourself on the outside and if you have this, you know, mysterious connection or this uh, transcendent, you know, way of maybe even you feel you can telepathically communicate with one another. You can just anticipate what the other is going to say. I guarantee there's going to be differences there. And those differences might even seem like polar opposites. And in meeting someone who has differences from you, it's an opportunity to come into relationship with difference within yourself. 
what would it be like? Why am I so identified as being extra nice? What, what if I have another part in me that I can't access that maybe doesn't want to be the way I am, but this person gives me permission to explore that part of myself, let's say. So anyways, I think that there's something in there around uh, some really good stuff around meeting yourself outside of yourself, being able to confront shadow material of your own, being able to work that out in and through relationship. I support all of these things. I think this is great. I think this helps uh, give us a clearer vision of the potential of partnership. I don't think that it means staying in opposition and you know, stay, it sure doesn't mean staying in toxic or abusive or really dysfunctional patterns with one another because we, uh, you know, just have this, these intense outbursts or meltdowns or it's just, it, that, that might be something else going on there. So that's a real shadow to the twin flame, uh, idea for me. And the other thing that I would say is, it's really important if you do believe and are looking for twin a twin flame is who gets to determine if you're if that person is your twin flame or not so when this occurs you know it's how do you know which part of you is saying oh this is my twin flame is that your fantasy or idealizing part is that your inner romantic who's just so desperate to find someone that and not just you know, someone but like this ideal version of a love for you. What if the person that you think is your twin flame doesn't feel that way about you? Then what? So I, I maybe there's some growth in that for you, for example. It doesn't necessarily uh, translate, I don't think, even if you really believe in that, that you are therefore not going to be satisfied in any relation. It's impossible to have a relationship with anyone else or anything like that. I think there's a lot to say around this twin flame. And I think there's something interesting in there around the idea of meeting a part of ourselves outside of ourselves. That to me, from a depth psychology or psychoanalytic perspective is true regardless of if you say, oh, I've met my twin flame or not, because we're always meeting more parts, more, uh, more shadow material in any relationship we have. It's, it's there, it's there. And we need the other to kind of bring this up and out and forward so that we can reclaim it and therefore have a, a conscious relationship with both ourselves and the other. Without doing that work, without reclaiming what we're projecting onto someone that's actually ours, then we're not going to ever get out of those loops or those patterns and those dysfunctional breakdowns that can occur in a relationship because we're going to think that the power lives outside of ourselves. We're going to think that it's all, you know, because I can't do anything because you won't change. And that's, that's not true that I think it's probably if you're feeling something like that, then there's something inside of you that would need to change as well. So I hope that for anyone interested in Twin Flames, this gives you a little bit more to think about. Even if you're not interested or don't subscribe to the notion of Twin Flames, there's still something in there, a, a kernel of something, I think, to really reflect on as far as, you know, what if there is more meaning and maybe a higher purpose to a relationship for me? That doesn't need to be a Twin Flame or you don't need to put that out there, put that on someone in order to have that as an experience. And I think that if someone is not coming at relationship from that transpersonal perspective, looking to learn, you know, more wholly and fully about themselves and explore the potential and the, the beauty of what a, a partnership can actually hold, then maybe there's something here to be inspired by or reflect on, which is, hmm, uh, yes, maybe this is the exact catalyst relationship with another to come into myself more wholly and more fully. All right. Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your own ideas, your take on twin flames. And, uh, yeah, I will see you next episode.
Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you're interested in learning about ways to work with me, head over to my website, themoderndayromantic.com. From there, you'll be able to contact me and learn a bit more about the customized intensives and retreats I offer both individuals and couples. Thanks so much for your support, and I'll see you next episode.